All right, we'll call the monthly meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board. Uh, let's see, hard to believe, February 21st, 2022. Um, you know, if you write a check tomorrow, you get to write 22222 <laughs> um, to order. And uh, <clears throat> start with uh, um, welcome folks that are here. Do we have any changes to the agenda? And, and, and folks, you might, if you're not talking, mute, mute yourself because we get lots of feedback with a number of people zooming. Yeah, I can, I can mute people too. So if you're wanting to speak, make sure you check your mute button first because we do pick up feedback in, in your room or even outside sometimes. I think uh, Brad Carrier had one change to the agenda. All right, Brad, you have something you wanna add? Yeah, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, um, I just wanted to touch base with you guys. Um, I was looking to replace a couple pieces of, of equipment out of the uh, equipment reserve fund there. Okay. Okay, we'll just, we won't take it up right this minute, but we'll just, we'll add it to the agenda and take it up. So, sounds um, good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it up early and not make you sit through the whole thing unless you want to. How's that? Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, now, I know we have uh, some folks from the public here, and whether you want to say something now or jump in at some part time during the meeting. Um, if you have questions, what we're going to do is sort of run through the through the budget. Um, what what would I know? We've got Judy, Suzette. What would folks? What's your pleasure? I think that's fine. Just run through how you normally do it, and I'll jump in if I have questions or raise my hand if I have questions. So terrific. Okay. <clears throat> um. So let me, before, I thought uh, before running all right through the budget, maybe take some things that might be shorter. So we're delighted to have folks stay, but also if you don't, if you don't um, want to stay or you have other things you need to be doing tonight to please feel free to, um, to leave. So Brad, why don't you, we added you, why don't you jump in? I think yours is pretty short. Okay, thank you. Um, so when I presented the budget to you guys um, a couple months ago there, we had a, one of our thermal imager cameras go down on the truck. Um, I did get a quote, um, Ron and I were talking a little and uh, I believe Broly's gonna chat with me at some point on some of these items there. Um, so our second engine, when we go, to North High Park, Eden for a call. That's our first truck that roll rolls out with them. Um, and our imaging camera is broke on that truck. So we're looking to replace it. Um, and I got a quote on one that's something like the one that we've had on our primary engine. And we've had that since we put that truck in service back in 2000. The one that I'm looking to replace um, went in service when we put our engine one in service and that was back in 2011. So unfortunately that camera didn't last as long as the one that we have on our engine two right now. Um, to replace that with the truck charger and everything that we need in um, two rechargeable batteries, we're looking at $9,150 to replace that unit so we'll have two imager cameras on both of our engines and then the other one is last week we had one of our um, co meters um, break on us and there the co meters are were purchased what i can find is back in 2003 um, in order to fix the one that we have we're looking at like six or seven hundred dollars to replace some of the um the oxygen sensor and all that in it um for 
the cylinder gas in the regulator to um to uh calibrate it every month um we're looking at sixteen hundred dollars for a new gas meter in the the cylinder gas in the regulator so we can calibrate it every month like we're supposed to um so i just wanted to run them two items by you guys and see what your thoughts were um so we're looking at one for 91.50 and the other one 16.05 there and ron we have money in the equipment account right yeah the uh Fire Equipment Reserve has a balance from last year, plus there's another 12,000 uh, appropriated in 23, or 22, sorry. And then another 12,000 in 23 if he pushes, pushes, sorry, purchases after July 1st. Gotcha, okay. Roley, you're the, you're the liaison, right? Well, if, 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 if they're broke, I mean, we got to replace them. There's no doubt about it, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm too, I don't want to have something that's been there since 2000, 2011. I mean, you know, there's no sense of <clears throat> just well buy some new ones and the 2003 for 1600, that ain't a bad thing to about put $600 into it. And, and, and um, another thousand dollars, you got a brand new one. Yep. You know, 1600. So I'm in favor of getting the new ones. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Brad? Do, do we need to look at, uh, I have no idea how many people make this equipment. Do we usually deal with the same, you know, um, with the same suppliers? I don't think there's that many. I think there's only oh. one that sells them in imagers. I mean, around here, right, Brad, that we usually dealt with. Yeah, there's there's actually two. Um, there's one that the salesman, the company's actually out of New Hampshire, um, and the salesman lives up in Derby Line. Um, I haven't heard a lot about that style, the manufacturer on that um, piece of equipment. So um, okay, it's a different kind. Yeah, it's a on, okay. yeah. Unfortunately, with the fire fire service, most of these companies they only allow one or two manufacturers in each state to sell, sell this stuff. So it makes it hard for us to get, um, comparable coats. Sure. Coats sure. Yep. There, you know, you know, because I priced out this, the MSA stuff because we've had good luck in the past. You know, like I said, our imager has been in service since 2000, you know, and, and we bought an off-brand one back in 2011 when we put engine one in service, and now that's already out of service. It's out of service, yeah. No, no, just just figure it's always good to check those things. But when yeah. you have a good supplier, and again, when you're buying stuff that isn't, you don't exactly run into Home Depot to pick up. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Okay. It's Brian. It's yeah. Brian. Um, what are you going to do with the current imager that you have? The current imager, we can't, I don't know what we're going to do with it um, because it, it's non-fixable, they told us uh, there. Um, it doesn't, the screen doesn't pick up or anything and it doesn't show us any hot spots where the fire is and all that. So, um, it, yeah, it's, it's worthless yeah. to us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I guess... Uh... We need a motion to approve Brad spending the money on these two pieces of replacement equipment. So move. Second. Okay. okay. Folks, do we want to do the other little quick things and do the budget last? Or I'm like, like oh, no, I don't want that guy screaming in my ears again. <laughs> um, or do it, shall we do a quick run through the budget? We can do the small things first. Okay. All right. Let's. Um, uh, Mary, you're not in Hyde Park. Just for a quick update, your big map downstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You've seen it. Yeah. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, hi everyone. Sorry, uh, I'll be very quick because I know you have a lot to do. I just wanted to make sure you knew that we were um, intending to come back this season. And uh, there's a small group of us, about six of us, who have been uh, meeting since Jan uh, in January. Every couple of weeks, we're having a Zoom call and just talking about what we want to do this summer. And we've got a kind of agenda to um, obviously to keep maintaining the sites that we worked on last summer. There <coughs> 25 of them and hopefully get more people involved and we have various ideas about how to communicate and, and make people know what's going on and then add a few sites. We have some in mind that we want to work on, do a demonstration project, um, try some new techniques. We're going to do some smothering so that we, there isn't so much human intervention involved and keep working with Mark and the road crew because they're already sensitive to the issue. And anyway, I, you get the picture where I wanted you to know that we're planning, we're actively interested. There's some, there's a great group of people. Um, Rich Pearson, I think was on the call earlier, but he maybe wasn't allowed yeah. back in. He's part of the group and his wife and some other people. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it. And we put, yeah, Susan mentioned, um, we've got a board down in the meeting room that's got some information on it. It's a map that Ron got us from the Lamoille County Planning Commission. And we're trying to put the sites that we're working on on the map. And, you know, possibly just map other sites that we're not working on that remains to be seen. And then the sites are listed, some pictures. Um, so check it out when you get a chance when you're next in the uh, meeting room downstairs. And if any of you have any ideas about outreach to get more people uh, involved, email me, let me know. Any questions, anybody? I know you have more important things to deal with in the middle of winter and at budget time. So you don't need to make me feel needed. Okay, <laughs> but I like your map. I oh, think thank that, you. I think I no, I think I think that's really helpful. Good. Um, and and you might sometime think about getting one and putting it in the library as well. Yeah, we've talked about the library. Yeah. They don't want that kind of size, but yeah, you're right. We want something in the library, and I'll move that onto the agenda for our next call because the library is sitting there and it's open, and people are in there, and we should, uh, yeah, touch that yeah, down in the little hallway. There would be a great place for a. Yeah. A smaller yeah. map. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Thanks for hanging in there with it. Yeah, sure. Appreciate Thank it. You. Anybody got any questions? No. We're good. Okay. Thumbs up. Um, let's see. Ron, what else? A little quick. So the downtown. Uh, that's not an action. That's not an action. Um, let's see if if COVID is a is a quick conversation, and maybe I'll just bring it up now and then at the end of the meeting. If folks don't know what they want to do, we can we can figure out when we want to go to in person. I, I think we'll always keep the hybrid because it just really is helpful to a lot of people. Um, but as as things are easing up. Uh, how how do we feel about going back to next next week's public meeting? Is because uh, it's all out there and everything will be will be um, Zoom only, um, remote only. So there's Dave. Okay, so. Um, Maybe we'll just leave it at the end of the meeting. See how see how everybody feels and what we what we want to what we want to do about that. Um, Ron, for five, the update on the VTrans highway mileage. Yeah, sure. The uh, VTrans mapping division spent must have been I don't know. We started working on this late in the fall. And then they continued all the way through last week, trying to figure out why some of the numbers on Town Highway 59, which is the mileage report, was not matching um, sort of their field measurements and trying to put together the history of what Town Highway 59 actually was way back when. And they brought it up to current and looked at all sorts of mapping. And then they were able to 
figure out there's a couple of errors made um, over time that put roads in wrong spots or use wrong highway numbers, et cetera. So their request is really just a minor change, but I think we're adding a, a tenth of a mile to a class four and taking a tenth of a mile to a, from a class three and then having uh, their report, which was sent out earlier, very long with lots of maps and things. Yes. Um, showing that the old town highway 59 which started in morseville near katie's falls where those storage buildings are it went through a, a bridge or a culvert that's west of the depot street bridge on uh, the town line and then scooted across south of the of the railroad tracks and then came in at west main street uh, avoiding main street totally and then it continued on to route 15 where black farm road is now so the error was in the um, just how that whole southern half or the um, part down by the rail trail was measured and numbered over time. And they're looking for the select board's um, uh, agreement that Town Highway 72, uh, which is mapped uh, about 100 feet east of where it actually is historically, should be moved to the east. And then that along with some minor, really minor changes to the class three and four sections uh, of Town Highway 59 result in, a, like, like I said, some very minor uh, mileage changes that will affect our, our reimbursement, but by, I don't even know if it's $100, it's a very small amount, um, probably under $100, maybe even 50 bucks, uh, because we're losing a 10th of, a, of one mile of class three. So that's all that's it was really just uh, we didn't include it in our annual report in February because they didn't have the good numbers, but they will make it part of the February report if you agree to those minor changes to town highway 59 and, and 72 and then when the new map comes out for the town highway general map it'll show those changes. I move okay. that we support those changes. Okay, got a second. People have to unmute. Yeah, okay. Um, all in favor of accepting the changes from VTRANS signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, I was going to say it looks good. Okay. Now, Ron, how about a quick run through of the budget? Let me get this where I can see it. Yeah, hold on one second. Dave's just trying yep. to get in. Oh, so, yep. Ron, you're muted. Yeah, no, I'm talking to Dave. Yeah, Roland's there. Yeah. Brian's there. Chastity's here. <laughs> you should listen on on your phone. Just don't use the use the phone, and you can listen on your phone rather than the video. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks. Bye. Dave didn't want to uh, participate by phone. He's, he's somehow he's logged into the meeting, but he lost his video on his end. He, he would rather be there with video. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but he said, thanks yeah, for Dave, meeting. I with... talked to Brian and, and it worked the way he told me to do it. So maybe, maybe he should call Brian. And... Uh, he just, he just got frustrated and <laughs> he, he's left. So we have four members here to continue the meeting. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Um, all right. I'll Let's call Dave and tell him to tell him what it, what Brian told me. To yeah, do. Try, try to do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
And Ron, you can just start running us through a, just a quick recap of the budget. Yeah, sure. We had the um, the one page, uh, if you remember the town, the town report, which was here. If everybody's gotten their town report, that's great. If not, the clerk has some paper copies. It's also posted on the home page of the website. Um, in that report is a page on the uh, tax rate projection sheet, which we use to sort of track how the budget looks uh, for July 1st and what the tax rate increases. And I'll just run through this really quick because it has all the highlights of the budget on it. Um, we're using a 2% increase in the grand list, which is the first time we've used that in probably 10 years. Um, it previously, it's, it was negative one year. It was 1% for a lot of the years, half a percent for some other years. So last year it was 1.5, I think, uh, maybe 5.1.6. And then this year we're hoping that it keeps uh, growing with the new housing and construction. Last couple of years we've had a double digit for new housing. Uh, you don't really see it, but it's happening kind of here and there throughout the town. Uh, all of that taken into consideration, the requests uh, for additional revenue from this uh, budget uh, calculates out to a uh, tax rate of 0 0.8680. The summary of the changes um, and what that means is skip to the bottom of that page. You'll see a projected tax rate increase of 4.97%, which is $41.12 for every 100 thousand of assessed value. So the $200,000 home would pay $82 more next year. And that's just the municipal portion. The school um, tax is obviously still negotiated with the legislature through May, I think. And then eventually in June, we'll get a, uh, a school tax rate to tax rate. In include with the tax bills. So back to the middle part of that page, you'll see the uh, sort of the bigger changes. We've had um, not really a change in funding that we get, but in the direction that it goes. So prior budget had EEGL grant, which is uh, specific to reappraisal, which was put in the general fund, which really doesn't affect the general fund tax rate. That goes directly into the reserve for the future reappraisal costs. So it's not helpful to reduce the taxes. So it shouldn't really be in the revenue side. So it go, it's a deduct of 100% of that, which is about 15,000 a year. Uh, state highway aid has been creeping very slowly. Um, that's reflected with the increase of 3,000. Uh, and that's, like I said, we haven't seen a boost, a big boost in that amount for a long time. This year, uh, because of surplus funds at the state, we received, I think, I want to say 15 thousand more of that state aid uh, because of a special appropriation one time. So that affected this year's revenue, current year. Ron, uh, can you share what you're looking at? Uh, sure. Um, hold on a second. If, if, you have, if you have your town report, it's on page 18. Can you see it now? Good. Okay. Yeah, okay. So then the expense side, uh, we have uh, projected a 4% cost of living across the board. Uh, that's the 12,300. Uh, we do have some staffing changes during the year up and down. So that's really just a projection based on current staffing. If things change, that number changes, uh, whether it's vacancy or new letters of hire. Uh, we are stepping up for reasons you saw earlier today, the, the methods and tools that the town has for cloud backup, for data protection, uh, staff training on uh, things like tonight, uh, where staff is trained on virus and malware and um, how to use the internet yeah. safely, email safely. Um, the salaries for the listers uh, was a, is a reduction of 6,000 move to the uh, town assessor line and the combination of that plus prior um, funds that we had appropriated for contracted assessment services uh, equals the cost of the town assessor, which was uh, the NEMREC assessor services was hired last year uh, because of the uh, 
board of listers not having a quorum. So the town assessor was appointed by the select board to take over all the statutory duties of the four of the board of listers. And that's one of the articles on this town meeting is to permanently change to a town assessor um, instead of board of listers. Uh, the contract with the union for the highway department increased salaries and wages uh, quite a bit. There was a step increase uh, for the three employees plus some additional stipend money in addition to the 4%. So all that's combined in the 26,500. And anytime you have a base wage increase, it also affects the overtime budget. So that was the number uh, just for the highway department. Uh, we do have a, a line in the, the highway budget that goes back and forth, the alternating budget. Uh, one year we have $35,000 increase to culverts for 23, FY23 starting July 1, the current year FY22 is zero. So that's why it looks like a large increase, but it was actually alternating um, with the uh, other line for, for gravel. So this year we have money for gravel, next year we'll have no money for gravel, back and forth. Uh, we do have a uh, center road paving loan that does have some debt service on it, which is new. And in order to pay the debt service, which is in another line of the, of the budget, we're decreasing the prior annual uh, allocation for paving by 65,000. Not, not a great thing to do, but we had to figure out how to uh, come up with money to pay the new loan. So we're paying the new loan out of the uh, prior pay, annual paving amount. Eventually the loan will be paid off and then that uh, annual paving loan will, um, sorry, the annual paving budget will increase uh, by that debt service amount. So it's not a, it's yeah. not really a loss of paving. It's just that we, the board decided to do a bunch of it in one year. I, I was going to say, right, for folks that are listening that don't have the, the long history on this is, uh, it was such a big project and we realized in the planning uh, that if we we were ultimately we were going to save money and get a better product if we paved it all at once as opposed to having to break it up into a couple of years so we borrowed the money um, knowing that we would have paving dollars coming in but but uh, felt it was one of those situations where it made sense to borrow the money um, have the job all done at once um, and uh, so, so that's how we ended up going for a, a loan for that, for that paving project. Okay, and then, um, and there, then, then you see the paving loan increase uh, for Center Road at one forty three eight hundred. The patrol budget for County Sheriff is still. Um, I think it's the third year, third year in a row that they've done three yeah, percent max. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the last year that the yeah, sheriff is. has agreed yeah. to keep that three percent increase. I don't know what that means for next year, but we'll find out uh, after the summer. Yeah. Uh, the NEMS ambulance is again in that two and a half to three percent increase at the forty-five hundred. Library staff did uh, add not staff people, but hours. And that's in order to cover the three floors. They finished the third floor for public use. They have the upper floor and the main floor. And they were finding it hard to be open during their regular hours and have one person sometimes running between all three floors. So the, the trustees proposed an increase to hours. And um, it, it's really for having coverage more than extending the library hours. Uh, the last item there is the a decrease in the reserve allocation by 30,000. Again, that's some of the money that's moving towards paying that five-year loan on Center Road. So once the loan's paid off, those all annual allocations for paving as well as the highway reserve should be back to their prior levels. As long as we don't take out more paving loans, obviously. But right. if, if, the, if the paving loan is paid, then that money could go back into those two line items. So I think that was the quick sort of snapshot overview with the 4.97% um, tax rate increase. The budget 
increase is 5.89 on the expense side. And the difference uh, why the tax rate is less is simply due to the grand list being projected at 2% increase. So I don't, if people have specific uh, questions, we can start back at the top or we can um, we'll go over any line item that people would like more information on. No, I think, I think that's good. It's, it, it seems in looking what other communities are doing that we, and even not just in the Loyal County, but around the state, they seems to be reasonable increases this year. Um, anybody have any questions? Any any of our folks that are listening have any questions or looking for some more information on a specific budget item? Dave called me to get back on again. All right. Right. He can hear us. So I know Brian's the one who has this figured out for us, right? Brian becomes our tutor. <laughs> You're in desperate perils. <laughs> <laughs> this is the blind leading the blind, right? right? It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, okay, I, I guess we're good for that review. Um, um, I have a question yeah. about the budget. Sure. About one yeah. of the other articles for town meeting is is now a good time for that. Um, sure, if you want, let me just see if we're if we're with get through the budget and then sure. What's your question? What can we do for you? Ooh, need to move that. Um, yeah, I was hoping you guys could speak more to the proposal to purchase the 25 acres from Menashe. Um, just sort of what the town's plan for that would be and where funding for that would come from. Um, you'll see in the warning that what we do is we would, we would borrow to buy it. Um, mm -hmm. Howard approached us, it was after it was later in the year, so we didn't have time to do a real um, in-depth homework on it. But he is—he's uh, in the process of selling a variety of things. Um, he uh, he approached the town and said that uh, that he would sell us this at, at uh, looking at the price of property. It is a certainly it's a reasonable price. It's a good piece of property. I know people have gotten. Um, people have gotten concerned because they heard them talking about, you know, the select board talking about one of the possibilities of, because it's, it's gravel, that whole area up there is gravel and it, it would get turned into a giant gravel pit, which is, has, is not true at all. What our, our thought in looking at it um, is that it is a good piece of property. Uh, it's an opportunity for the town to purchase a good piece of property. Currently the, the, uh, the Act 250 um, uh, regulations on it right now is nothing can be done with that property until 2035. So it's it's uh, safely staying in, in uh, agricultural use. Um, and the, our, our current gravel pit across the road, of course, the ball fields are up there. And I know there are a lot of people in Hyde Park, they don't realize there are ball fields up there. And uh, one, one of the neat things that's happened in the past couple of years in town is a group of uh, primarily young, younger parents have, uh, are reactivating a lot of kids' sports and that sort of stuff. And so those ball fields and all those recreational areas are really starting to come into use again. One of the long-term issues is those ball fields are currently sitting on the other half of our current gravel pit. So as we start digging into that bank, we're going to be digging into and the ball fields could get smaller and smaller. So knowing that ultimately there's going to be an issue up there, our thought as a select board was um, it's, a, it's a good investment. As uh, people said, they aren't making any more property. And that if the town goes ahead and buys it, we can then put together, we got plenty of time before anything can happen to it. We've got time to put together a good, a uh, mixed committee from the entire community, and certainly folks that live up that way, um, to come up with a variety of alternatives of what we might want to do with that property. 
And of course, worse comes to worse, we could always turn around and resell it. So there is, there is no plan for the property. It's a feeling that uh, if the town owns it, then we have control over what happens to that property. Uh, if, if we don't, it's, it's going to get sold and, um, and who knows what will happen to it. But again, to know for everybody to know that the current Act 250, nothing can be done until 2035, which is a, right now that seems like a long way out there. But um, I, I, again, I think uh, the select board looked at it and saw here's, a, uh, here's an interesting opportunity for the town to buy a piece of property um, and have the community involved and do some long-term planning for what we would like to do with that. Hmm. I think Susan, could I say something? Sure, absolutely. You better remind the people that are listening to where Underhill, Jericho, Essex, and everybody is hauling their sand and gravel from. And how many miles they're hauling their stuff from because it's going to be down the road 10, 15 years from now that um, there ain't going to be much gravel and sand around this area no, and no. right now underhill and jericho are buying theirs in in um, natals down to johnson and hauling it all summer long down to their place because they can't get none down there yeah as i say it, it's gonna it's a uh, it's a resource issue it's also a uh, so is good agricultural land is a resource issue. And that's why um, I, again, I, I think it's a great opportunity for the, for the town to put together. And I'm sure the, the regional planning commission, uh, you know, could, would help, um, but to develop a, a variety of options for what we would like to see happen with that property and then let the voters decide on what they want to have happen with that property. So this would, this would be, years in the planning and, and getting it done. And as I say, it's the, the, the property is all, all tied up until 2035 anyway. Um, so I, we, we just saw it as, a, as an opportunity for the town and wanted to see if folks were interested in, in, uh, in doing that. The, um, thank you, that's helpful. I, yep. High mowing is currently using that property, right? Yep, yep, they are. Um, so have, like, have they expected <laughs> expressed interest in continuing to use it like until 2035 would the town potentially rent the land or lease the land back to them in some fashion we haven't we haven't talked with them because we thought that was sort of sort of jumping a little far ahead if we aren't if we don't end up owning it um yeah. but but i i do know that I, Obviously, I think Howard offered it to them first, and they aren't in a position to buy it. So it yeah. would certainly make perfect sense, you know, while it's being used to have them continue to use it while it's, you know, while it's under Act 250, you know. And and I I'm sure have them be part of a planning process for what uh, what should what should the town do with that with that acreage. Okay, great. Um, I I'd like to apologize for uh, my post on Front Porch Forum. It, it was not clear from the minutes. Um, I, yeah, I know. I appreciate that. That, um, and, and I got this uh, flyer after I posted that, but I actually, um, I, I see now, like I don't really have a problem with the expansion of the gravel pit in the area where the ball field is, if there's another place for a ball field, I think that's good. I am a little bit concerned about the fact that um, the reason that that is um, tied up until 2035 with Act 250 is because the um, Howard's pit left of, of our pit there, that big pit, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, this 25 acre parcel was an offset, um, meaning that, that this was supposed to remain as a prime agricultural land because there was so much excavating going on um, just nearby. So that's why it's tied up. And so, you know, I think ball field would be okay, but, um, but, but any kind of development other than agriculture or recreation, I, I would be really opposed to just because the intention of, I mean, I'm surprised that it's not 
like conserve land at this point, but uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that the, the, the reason that it's in Act 250 at the moment is because it's supposed to be, it, because it's prime agricultural land, yep. right? It's flat, yep. it's got topsoil on it. And I would hate the town- but It drains well, right. To be somebody yeah. who, um, who wasn't respecting the little bit that we have left. I, and, and that's why, again, A, that time frame is so nice and long and why you need a really um, diverse committee put together. This, this is gonna take a couple of years to look, to look at options because in some ways what you have here is a, is a uh, classic conflict between two resources. You know, one of them is agricultural land and the other is gravel. Um, so, so it's, uh, uh, again, it's what, what we, and, and I'll say as an, as an individual, as I see, it's an opportunity that if the town buys it, then, then we have the say, and the town as a whole has a say as to what happens to that property. And, um, I, uh, that idea appeals to me to have the town of Hyde Park decide what needs what happens with that property. Anybody else have any questions about that property? Is eleven thousand dollars an acre like the going rate right now? I, I would say for for good property that you know that would perk beautifully that does all sorts of things that's not a bad price on that property and and yeah. again we, we could always we could always decide you know in the end the town could always decide to turn around and sell it or to conserve it and you know there i again there are there are you get a good group of people together i bet you're going to come up with a list of 15 different ideas of what could be done with a with a nice piece of property like that and, uh, and again, to me, that's, that's the point, and that's the value of the town buying it right now. We good? Okay. Anybody want to talk about town listers? <laughs> I think, I, and, and again, you know, getting the flyer out as we, we in, in getting that done, we were trying to figure, you don't want to send it too early, because if you send it too early, people aren't going to pay any attention to it, but we were obviously just, oh, well, actually, they got the town meeting reports back to us a little bit faster than we thought they were going to, so, so uh, we said, oops, okay, that, that's okay, that, that's the, I think this is the hard part about not having town meetings in person, you know, you get, you don't get to, um, you don't get to have these conversations, so we're, we're we're trying to get information out to folks as as many ways as possible. Uh, maybe something in front porch forum <clears throat> about this. Uh, yep, we thought we sort of wait. I, I expected a few folks which would, would show up tonight as, as folks have, and I will can put something on front porch forum. And I was going to give Roland LaJoy a call and do something on the radio too. But thanks for asking. Okay. Any anybody else that's listening in have any questions or wanna? Susan, wanna can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, this is Chastity. Yeah, yep. the other thing that we should, you know, make make public is, you know, before you do, you know, post things in front porch forum or write things to the paper that you know, us as board members are always available for questions. And we all have emails and cell phone numbers where if, you know, if people do have concerns or questions that that's what we're here for, um, you know, to help explain things if people do, do have questions. So just want to kind of put that out there in public that we're very open to hearing from people. So feel free to contact us. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about a quick review of the of the Brussels tax stabilization agreement?
I don't have anything to uh, present exactly to the to the screen, but uh, James Brosso on the Brosso Fuels on Route 100 was partially done with investment of um, his facility up there. He's got a small office that he finished. He's got his tank yard finished. And he's getting ready to do a four bay maintenance and uh, truck shop repair shop. And part of the tax stabilization agreement is that uh, that is done prior to the investment. So he's got to use projected numbers of what he's going to increase the grand list on. And then the Joint Economic Development Board would say, okay, so based on this and the benefit to the town, you can have a um, tax stabilization agreement, which would reduce his taxes by a X dollars based on uh, the new investment amount, not, not the whole original land and everything else. It's the new investment that he's proposing. Uh, the problem is that um, uh, the, the JEDB needs to be reorganized a little bit. Uh, the way it was set up was that um, a village trustee and a select board member would uh, be on it with one other person, community member, which is Greg Paws. Over the last year, uh, we lost the two other members, uh, Charlie Aranovici and Roger Odette. So before we can deal with before we can deal with James, we need to see which one of the current members on the select board wants to take uh, Roger our debt spot. And then the village trustees will have to make the same decision there. Once we get the three people together, uh, James will meet with them and, and start to prepare a recommendation. And that recommendation of a, we've used an Excel sheet, we've used draft agreement from the town attorney, and that goes to both boards for review and approval. And then when everybody's happy, uh, get signed and recorded in land records. So the only, the only consideration tonight is to let you know that James is considering pursuing that agreement, but we also need um, somebody to take Roger at that spot. Okay. Okay, we'll get through town meeting and find out who's going to liaison to what and who does does what. Um, okay, the downtown transportation grant application. Okay, that that project is actually pretty far along as far as the application okay. materials go. Yeah. Uh, they're looking for village center projects. Uh, first year, prior years were limited to downtown, designate downtowns like Montpelier, Barrie, so on. Uh, this is extended this first year to the village centers, and that includes Hyde Park Village Center along Main Street and Church Street, which is also where we have the 30% uh, design done already for the stormwater project on uh, from Watershed Consulting. It's posted on the homepage if people haven't seen it before. And that application is due March 7th. So uh, I don't have a complete application ready yet, but I may need a quick uh, a vote when you get a chance to look at it and to decide to submit that. The very competitive grant, uh, it doesn't have, it's got 80-20% split on it, but it has a sec separate component for funding in, in, in addition to transportation, which is a stormwater component. And I think the combination of the two grants uh, would fund about half of the complete project. Uh, the whole project is about a million dollars and that includes from the elementary school all the way down Main Street towards West Main and then up Church Street. The first phase, which looks like it's uh, could be funded by this downtown grant uh, is just Church Street to the intersection at Main. And then future grants would have to do both legs east and west from the from the courthouse intersection. Courthouse. So that's that, I just needed to get an update and let you know that that is the idea. And then sometime before March seventh, I may need a quick special meeting to review it in more detail. Um, and I could wait until after town meeting day, obviously, to bring the new members up to speed, if, assuming we have at least one new member and um, Roland gets reelected, which is likely, I would think. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so if you want to wait for that, I can wait till after town meeting day and then um, and then have a quick presentation and get your up, up or down on it to make the application. All right. 
that's good. I just want to okay, yeah. have enough time to get it all there. together, but I, I do have a couple more weeks to pull it together. Okay. Um, oh, the, the FEMA mitigation projects. This was, um, Ron and I were talking about this and I think we're standing in the right place at the right time for this set of projects. Yeah, this is more of just a quick update um, and, a, and a request for some uh, funding uh, under this FEMA mitigation. So Halloween storm, we had 42 sites that were damaged. Uh, three of those sites have raised themselves to a higher level of repair. Those are, um, FEMA's calling them uh, mitigation for mitigation. codes and standards. So codes and standards mitigation means that those sites were evaluated through a hydraulic study, which we completed last year, showing that those existing culverts are undersized and need to be upgraded. And they're upgraded to your 2019 road and bridge policy. The 2019 road and bridge policy is accepted by FEMA uh, as a standard for codes and standards. And they exceed the state standards, which are 2013 version. And basically the select board in Hyde Park said, uh, we're, we're doing designs for culverts at 50 year storm events. And the old standards were 25 year. The 50 year storm uh, beefs those up a little bit and allows for, really it's the re resiliency thing. Uh, when, when the more frequent storms come with heavy downpours, we should be able to sit on those culverts and watch the water go under instead of down the road. <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, all Ron, three would you of, remind folks where the the three culverts are? Yeah, sure. The, the three sites that were damaged and are being pushed through for mitigation are the Centerville Road culvert just south of Noyce Farm Road. Um, you'll see the uh, there's a fire there's a fire hydrant and a water main in that area that uh, has been damaged and repaired a couple times. Uh, the second site is Brook Road, which is near. Mac Teal's place or around 811 Brook Road is there's no easy way to identify it except it's where the new guardrail is put new in. Guardrails, yeah. Safety measure. The third side is up on North Hyde Park Road, uh, just east of Thompson Hill Road. And that site uh, was the highest damage in town, which washed out a few hundred feet of uh, North Hyde Park Road and the entrance to Thompson Hill Road and and carried on to damage a little bit of Jones Road. So that site actually has a decent bridge under Thompson Hill Road. If, if you go through that little connector section, uh, you'll see there's a pretty decent bridge with a nice waterfall. But then you go upstream a little bit and there's actually a smaller culvert that's supposed to carry the same amount of water. So those are the three sites. Uh, like I said, we did finish the hydraulic study, which showed basically what size we need. Uh, last fall, we completed the site. Um, assessment, which basically means somebody went out there and took some points with a survey and was able to do an existing site map. And the next step is to complete the final design, get to get to some bidding, get to construction, and then inspection. That whole second part that I just talked about is something FEMA has been pushing us to keep going on because they see it as an open project from 2019 and it's getting old and they don't like it. So they're, they're actually putting a little bit of can you guys pick up the pace a little bit? So I said, okay, so we're gonna pick up the pace a little bit. And we called Watershed uh, and I said, you know, we need to get a, bu a bunch of stuff done all at once basically, which is final design, permitting, bidding, bid opening, construction and, and inspection. And that would be the whole project. And FEMA said that they, because Watershed has started already on these sites by doing the initial assessment back in right after the flood, including the hydraulic study, that they would accept Watershed without going out to a bid process because they have so much invested in it already. Under the FEMA mitigation, there's 75% funding from FEMA and 17.5% from the state of Vermont which totals 90, 92.5%, which leaves the town match on this at 7.5%, which is good good way to get three culverts done if, if the all the permits run through and we get the contract with FEMA to 
fund at that level, which is the next step. Um, watershed is proposed, uh, basically a complete package of things that are needed to do that FEMA wants us to do at uh, 162,000 for all of the engineering oversight permitting and everything else that needs. It will just be monitoring that progress. We won't be really managing the project. They'll do all that for us. Probably working with FEMA or whoever else needs to see their work. Uh, that contract with Watershed is what uh, they provide a scope of work for. And I, I think I, I think I included that in your staff packet. Yeah. It's posted online yeah, it if you don't have it. Um, yeah. So that's that's what we're trying to get approved to keep moving forward. At some point, FEMA will say, uh, we can't carry on anymore. You're not moving fast enough. They'll, they'll just close out those projects and say, we'll, we'll move on to somebody else that wants to access. And I don't, I don't think that's in the best interest of the town to lose FEMA support, so. No, and I, I think sometimes in the past, when you had a major event, they, FEMA didn't necessarily carry the mitigation projects along with it. They, a lot of times you needed to go back and start another whole bunch of, of loops. Um, the fact that they've kept this open and they're pushing us to get it, I, I see as a real opportunity to make sure that three major projects get done at the 92 and a half percent funding. What are, what are my what are my road people there, Roly and Brian and Dave? I definitely don't want to lose funding. Yeah. We've got to get yeah. moving ahead. Well, I think it's a good it's a it's a good opportunity. Okay, so do you need us to uh, or this is just a a uh, so we know what's going on in some no, place. Oh yeah, you need, you need that. No, we, I'm trying we need to, to approve it, right? So we can sign it. Right? Yeah, I'm pulling up the um, proposed scope of work with um, Andres. Yeah, it's, it's in the it's in the packet. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it on the screen for a second. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. It's three different projects, uh, roughly fifty-four thousand each, which includes all of these things, which is um, right here from a kickoff meeting with the town and FEMA, all the way through um, post-construction punch list items, and then final acceptance of the work. It was not small project. I mean, we we did. A similar project on Cleveland Corners for the Rodman Brook. Uh, that okay. that project is very similar to these three. They're, they'll probably all look the same actually when we're done. But anyway, that's the motion is the 162, 143. And then uh, if that's accepted, I'll engage Watershed and they will carry forward. So moved. Okay, got a second. Rolly, got any second. questions about second. it? Okay. No, nope, I All don't right. have no question. Keep going. Okay. Dave, you good? Chastity? Okay, we'll go. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. The uh, town orders and finance update. Okay, yeah, I'm just getting out of a couple screens here because I was getting too cluttered there. Yep. Okay. Okay, so uh, town orders were posted on Friday yep. uh, online. So hopefully everybody's had a chance. I didn't get any questions from anybody. So I'm, I don't have any answers, but. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I can try to answer those, or we can have a motion to approve those um, orders for tonight. I don't have. Can any you hear me now? Yep. Can yes. you hear me now? <laughs> yes, Chastity. <laughs> I'm I'm struggling with the star six thing. Sorry. 
Um, and I did approve the uh, the FEMA work. I don't yeah. think I got okay. unmuted in time. So I did. Yeah. I was okay with that. Just so I got five. Know. I got five zero um, on that one. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, and I did look at the um, town orders too, so I moved to approve those. They looked good. They're they're pretty self-explanatory. Yep. Got a second. I think Brian okay. made the motion. Oh, Brian. The, Dave's Dave's thumbs upping. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. Okay. Other business. Uh, we have a, a, a report on the second part of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. I, I kind of lost track of the agenda, but I, did we skip anything from earlier? Is this the. Uh, no, the, we're going to go back to figure out what we want to do with COVID but, for meetings, but anything okay. else got done. Okay. Okay. On the finance side, uh, and Chassis can chime in after I give a little bit of a. Of a uh, opening here. Chastity and I met with Deborah Cobus last Tuesday about Deborah's desire to downsize her responsibilities. So that means that uh, she will be taking anything from no role to volunteer role to um, sort of on call assistant uh, now that she's fully, pretty much fully trained after uh, two and a half months. She still has two months to go or two weeks to go before her 90 days is up. But she's told me that she'd like to um, basically terminate the relationship on the 27th of February. So that is coming right up. Um, our meeting with her last week, uh, she had lots of good ideas about what the town should do for uh, finance. And that's what Chastity and I endeavored kind of hashed around and talked about. And we're in a situation where we still, we, we still have payroll, we still have accounts payable, we still have an ongoing audit, we still have grants that are flying through, you know, 10 or so grants that are in process all the time. So the finance stuff keeps rolling and we definitely need a full-time person to help with all that stuff. So um, how we do it, there's a couple options. Uh, one is, I think Chastity is, um, can talk to this about uh, re-advertising with a new job description. And we also have three candidates from the first round that we could reach out to. So Chastity, why don't you take it from there? Sure. Um, everybody can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. Um... Deborah has some fantastic ideas actually about kind of restructuring and offering insight um, on how to make things run smoother um, and easier. Um, and we're actually going to meet, her and I are actually going to meet a couple other times. I'm kind of letting her, she's really busy. So um, obviously if she's wrapping things up, um, but the job, I do think we need to, we're kind of revamping that job description. Um, to make it more to what the job actually is. Um, and yeah, I don't really know what else we can say, Ron. I mean, I don't know, does, does anyone have any insider questions? I mean, this is kind of like me asking about roads, probably you guys asking about the job description for an accounting person in their office, in the office. <laughs> um, but um, I do, I do really, being what I do for a living is very similar to kind of what Deborah's mm -hmm. doing. So when she was like talking about all these like ideas and changes and like making things smoother and the process is cleaner, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I was totally into it and <laughs> and totally right. understanding and realized mm -hmm. that things do kind of need to change, I think, in the office structure as far as that stuff goes. Um and was even willing to offer up some of my time to kind of go in and me and, and help with this whole transition period if needed, um, you know, to kind of oversee stuff and, and get, a, and get really get a hands on on how things are running um, in there too. Um, so I can, I can help to um, offer ideas, I guess. 
Does that make mm. sense, Ron? Do you agree with that blubbering? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Deborah did. Deborah provided a revised job description called uh, Finance and Administration Manager, which is less than a director uh, level. Uh, so that person would be uh, not paid as much, would still be programmed for 40 hours, but would uh, work in partnership with the with the Krista at the front desk, uh, beginning the process. So if you think of process, everything comes in through the front door, basically, uh, and email now. And somebody has to be in the office to open the mail, put it where it needs to go, as well as uh, accept pay, you know, timesheets from people and get those where they need to go. So there's certain things that happen in the office that uh, Deborah identified as a good task for uh, part of Krista's 40 hours. She also said that you know, when, you, when you talk about process, whatever it is, the people that are doing the, um, the higher level stuff, which is select board, the outside auditor, and the finance manager, they all need to have uh, time basically to have the um, focus, if you will. So Deborah's frustration was she was opening mail, trying to sort it to department heads, trying to track down things that department heads should have been doing and distracting her from looking at the higher level stuff. And she just figured that, you know, what the town really needed at, at this first step or revised step is to have the uh, sort of a manager person that really doesn't, isn't expected to do the high, higher level things. Um, we, what that means is uh, the town administrator and Kim would, would be more engaged with those kind of things. And that means something like a finance committee, uh, which Deborah said she might volunteer on, for example. And those people would deal with investments and moving money and watching out for new changes in uh, state law, looking at debt service, planning, all those kind of things that somebody just processing bills doesn't really get into. So it's kind of a, a triage type of thing where you say, what, what are the things that, you know, just kind of think of those three different areas. It's the day-to-day -day processing of paper, it's the actual paying people, and then it's the oversight of all that. So those are three different things that Deborah felt under the old job description were all her job duties and she wasn't getting help as much from as she thought she needed. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, I, we don't have a lot of time in the sense of having a vacancy. Uh, so there is some kind of immediacy to trying to get an ad out in the paper. The job description, this revised one is very similar to the finance director, but it took off some of those higher level things that I was talking about. And it does anticipate working a little closer with uh, with Kim and Krista on a, on a couple areas more so than now. And then we can uh, and get that ad in the paper as soon as as soon as Thursday, if you wanted to, because the deadline is tomorrow morning for a job ad. And the other option that we have, because we have them, are three resumes and and letters of interest from three people that came in with Deborah's that we could also pull from and re-interview those people as part of that. I probably, you know, do, being so close, I probably would send them an invitation or pick one or two of them for an invitation. Uh, if you don't want to do that, we can just advertise first, see who reapplies and who newly applies and then pick from that batch. Uh, but I'd have it a pretty quick turnaround. We're talking about weeks. We're not going to put in a, you know, response time out forever, but we can have a, uh, you know, position open till filled type of thing versus some kind of deadline, you know, down the road. These uh, resignations seem to be uh, uh, becoming more frequent and uh, I'm alarmed by that. And uh, I think that uh, the very first thing we should do is uh, define that job description right down to the, the letter. And so that when they come into it, there's an expectation that, uh, uh, they'll have, and, and, and it won't be something that they'll cause them to keep leaving. Well, I, I think that's what chastity has done. I need it. 
I'd like to see the job About, description. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what Deborah and I are doing. Um, Brian is just that. So um, that it is specific that you know that everybody knows Krista. You know Krista's eight hours that she has that she is to be working. You know for us per se um, is going to be very defined um, because it's kind of. It's, it's defined, but it's not really defined right now. So, um, it needs to be defined. Yeah, and that's what Deborah and I have done. And actually, I, I shouldn't say me. Deborah really has and offer and kind of talked to Ron about the areas, and we all agreed, and we're we're getting it all in writing, and you know, new processes and and things that. So it is defined. Um, you know, things like that kind of they change over the years you know too um you know accounting things change and the systems change so it's it's time for a big update of that anyway i think um so this is a great a great perfect time to do it and we have we have a great person that's willing to help us do that which is really which is even better um she's very knowledgeable deborah is and um so um we can you know, I can let you more let you know more about like the changes in the the restructuring, I should say. Restructuring, I think, is a better word of the different duties and so who I want to is see responsible a, for what exactly. Yeah, I'd like to see a uh, the before and after of that job description, and then I can uh, oh, yes. uh, go from there and take a look at that as well. I just yep and beyond fathom why we're losing somebody like Deborah that's uh, uh, in your own words are, are uh, uh, an excellent choice. I, I yeah, think maybe part, all part job. yeah I, well and I think part of what we get caught on to is is we've periodically it sort of comes up but we have you know, Hyde Park used to be tiny, and now we aren't big, but we're sort of in between. So, so some of the positions are sort of uh, they're they're kind of difficult. And one of Roly, Roly and Dave, well, certainly this uh, again. Now we we're going to need to be clear that um, that we're we're paying for whether it's six or eight hours. Or we'll, we'll, get into the argument but i just say it's a day um of that you know kim 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 has her for four days and we have her for a day and to be clear what that work needs to be um and and again i think i chastity we're also very fortunate to have you because you're familiar and comfortable with all these sorts of things um leaving other four of us to try and write a job description for a financial person would you know not have worked out too well so so i think between us again it's just it's a uh, we're, we're going through figuring out what it is we really need and uh and a, and a time to do some um it's chastity and deborah and ron have, have said when i talked to them of uh, kind of an upgrading of a variety of the systems and the state it's not a surprise the state is um, when they look at some of the systems that that you have and how we keep track of things is, uh, is sort of saying, here's how they'd like to see some things done. I think they'd like to see towns doing things on a more uniform level so that there's better communication and sharing of information. So I think there's um, the three areas that I've mentioned before are still kind of the framework that we're trying to follow rather than expect some one person to do it all to look at the Krista or the eight hours, let's call it, to do the uh, clerical or day-to-day -day paperwork organizational things, the things that have to happen to get it started on the right track. On the opposite end of that is trying to really get that finance committee running so that we can have the upper level things done as well. That would be a select board member, Deborah potentially, town administrator, town treasurer, uh, we have two residents that want to be on it and get them to start looking at the very big picture items um, so that, you know, at least we can have that kind of, I don't know what you call it, oversight, but at least some a better way to take some time and be thoughtful about finances. We seem to be always responding to sort of emergencies or problems 
And it really doesn't have to be that way. I mean, we could do a lot better with capital planning. We could do that a lot better with the um, projecting uh, expenses. We can do a lot of things better with uh, the budget to actual and projecting highway expenses. But the, really, the way the town is structured, there's not a lot of time for those things. And then when you have somebody like Deborah who has a higher level capacity, you know, sorting the mail, that's really not the best use of her skills or, or experience. So that's how I'm trying to look at it from that perspective where we're not, it, it's not a huge budget, budget type item. It's more like Brian was saying, we need to think of this as a, a cohesive operation instead of just focusing on one position try to figure out what is quite not right and fix those areas so that we can have better um, across the board operation, not just not just hiring a finance director and expecting that person to do it all. Which is, right now, Krista is doing the, the mail. Is that what, is that correct? She's doing, yeah, she's doing some of the mail. She'll open the mail, she'll stamp it, and she'll put it either on my desk or try to get it to uh, Deborah. And then from those two places, we get it out to the departments. But she could do that herself right from the beginning and get it to those departments so that the departments know they have some incoming that needs to be dealt with. And then by that, they can save the time of getting it back to the payroll, I'm sorry, the AP process to get paid. That's just one example of something that, you know, Chris is already doing it, but with a little bit of tweak, it would save time on other people's plates, so to speak. Dave, you're muted. Yeah. He's, Dave's muted. I don't, can yeah, I no, unmute no. him? Just say, we can't hear you, Dave. Let me just, I don't know if I can fix him or not. Okay, he's muted again, or at least that symbol I see. He probably needs to do the star six, like I'm doing and get confused about I can if see he's his on board. his phone. No, you can see him. Oh, okay. Okay, unmute again, Dave. Can you do it? Oh, okay, now, can we hear you? No. No, Maybe. It's, it's like his audio is off on his device because I can't hear him at all. Try star six. <laughs> Yeah, he's all done. He's <laughs> he's like, damn it, I'm done. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh. Um, so that starts the COVID conversation. Can we please meet in person? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so much complication online. Oh. I, I know. I think we we need to do the 28th because that's been warned, you know, as as a remote only. So next Monday when we do the informational thing. Um, I oh, right. like just the the next select board meeting. I got to look at it anyway. I leave on the 18th of March, um, and in the next select board meeting, I think is like the 21st or something, the regular one. But if we either um, if it was all right for folks to do it a week early, or I'll 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 call into that one. I'm doing a week early. I don't have no problem. Yeah, if we did, if we did it on the 14th of March, that worked for you, Chastity. That's the planning commission. Well, I have a school. That's okay. Yeah, and I have a school board meeting, but that's, that's okay. Just good. Well, 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 no. Like, well, how about the seventh? Well, the seventh. Do it right after. Oh, right after town meeting. Yeah, the seventh. That's the next. Yeah, I can. That worked for Roly and Brian? Works for me, March 7th. I believe the 7th will work. Okay. All right. Then, then we'll do the next regular board meeting on the 7th. And uh, I'm in, Roly, you comfortable in person? Brian, comfortable in person? Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll go back to in person, but, you know, leave leave a hybrid for Hello. folks that, that want to do that. Hey, hey there he is. Dave? Yeah, we got you. Hey, yeah, I, he's just, I, he's I, calling I, yeah, I just called in and I, I just want to put this in and back onto that finance and all of that stuff going on. And that's probably my last suggestion. So 
take it with stride. <laughs> what I can't understand, Hyde Park is not a big town. In fact, it's really not even a medium town. When we started like three, four years ago, when we had a person that was working there that got done and we hired somebody else and they worked for a while and got done and stuff, we created a finance committee, a finance person, which is a separate separate person, which is saying, okay, I'm in finance. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. And we got people in another part of the office saying that, that's not my job, that's finance job and stuff. And they all used to work together. Now you haven't got that. Now, what we spent over the last five years in, and, and I'm not pushing anybody under the bus, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing here. Yep. What we spent in the last five years by putting Nimric on and putting all these uh, th these things that, that is uh, uh, saving everybody's time by not have to record this and record that, I, I think we went the wrong direction with, with, it, with, the, uh, with the town. Everybody should be in that place working together, not individual things where, where uh, two people sometimes are doing the same job or nobody is doing one job that used to be. Jesus, we, we ran that town for years with, with three people, and it worked damn good. And we haven't grown that much in five years. So I'm, I'm going to it, say you you, recon, you reconsidered some of your stuff because I don't think you need a separate finance committee. Uh, and I don't think you need somebody designated to open the mail. If everybody should kick in and do their jobs and work together, you've got enough people in that office. When I come home well, and, and supper, and supper problem, isn't on the that, table, that's when, when that's I come home and you. supper... Oh. Yeah, that doesn't happen, in the guys. So... You can say that all you want, Dave, but that's not the way it goes. And um, I can speak because I do accounting and it's a lot. You might think you're a small town, you're not. You need everything run through, it's a budget. You need, you guys saw the war, the war, the warning, like all those bills, they have to be coded, they have to be budgeted. That takes a lot of time. It's, it's a huge, 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 huge job. And Kim's our town clerk. She's an elected official. She's out of the picture. Do you think she's going to open the mail? Probably not. So it's like their their duties do have to be specific, and they do have to be written down, or it's not going to get done. End of story. And that's my opinion. And I trust me, that's what's happening. So I want to go in there and I want to put down what everyone has to do. And if dinner's not on the table, you know what? Somebody's getting blamed for it because it's not getting done because it was in their job description. So yeah. I can't compare yeah. dinner being done. That's the way it is. So I'm, it needs to be specific and it needs to be absolutely written down and with all the grants and all the budgeting and everybody, You, when's the last time you saw a budget report, a budget to actuals report? The select board's not getting what we need at all, at all. And it's not Ron's job as the town administrator to be giving us the budget numbers. It's a, it should yeah, be a well. finance direct, but we don't have that person. So there needs, and I think in part of this restructuring, Ron, I'm gonna throw this out there that part of Ron's job is needs to be changed too. Like there's things that he's doing that aren't at all in his job description. And there's things that he's not doing that are in his job description, but it's because people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> So yeah. Well, then the, the then the answer to that is sit down and write job descriptions. That's and and Brian, Brian has been saying that for two years, but I haven't seen nothing got done. Well, it's getting done because every using the office help. Every position Since has I've a. Been, there's been like five different job changes in that office. Yeah, I think <laughs> Dave. Every 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 position has had job description for years. Yeah. I don't know why you keep saying that. Uh, you've been provided copies of them before. Everybody has copies. They're all out there. We did them five or six years ago. Everybody has a job description. The problem that we're finding is that as the town changes and the demands on these jobs get more and we have less volunteers picking up the slack, that you end up with a lot of administrative tasks that are done by contractors or townspeople that are you know, basically employees um, that are paid 
and everybody's doing the best they can with a whole bunch of different things. And the select board has no control over Krista or uh, Kim, except for those eight hours. So if, if the town wants to operate the way it's supposed to, I don't, you, you must not be aware, maybe that's my fault, of the problems we have. Uh, Chastity just told you one, which is um, you're not getting the reports you need to make uh, informed decisions. Now, maybe, maybe you're fine shooting from the hip, but I think the select board really should have the benefit of really good, solid, uh, regular reports on finances, accounts, uh, contracts that are well written. You're, you're making pretty good use of grant money, but that comes with a huge time commitment too. So I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by we've done this way you know, for hundreds of years, what's changed? Um, I would argue that things haven't been done well over the hundred years. And certainly they, they are, when we're looking into it, we're finding out things that aren't done the right way. And I'd rather go to well, the select board. What's that? Well, maybe that's why I'm seeing that. That's why I'm feeling the, uh, the, uh, well, the feeling the way I'm feeling about well, it. Cause maybe they weren't done right. No, and now they are, that it, it's, it's coming to light. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe that's, uh, that's totally my fault because sometimes I just jump in and take care of stuff like working weekends and try to cover, you know, animal control and everything else. I, I do those, th <laughs> I do those things and I don't complain about it, but it pushed, it pushes things in bad directions. It's almost like the best analogy I could think of. And this is something that Chastity and I and Deborah are finding. Um, if you have a library that you're running, and it runs on donations and volunteers for years. What happens when those things dry up? You end, you end up with a service that still needs to be provided, but you don't really know how to provide it because you haven't had to run a library before with paid people and, and responsibilities. And that's the same thing that's happened with the finance department and the town and as a whole. For years, you operate with what you have. And if you wanna make some improvements, uh, you know, the, the most, some of the most embarrassing things are like when Matt Morin is at a select board meeting a few months ago and simply right. wants to know how much is in his recreation reserve account. He had a very simple question. And I had to, I was embarrassed because I had to tell him that we don't have that number yet. And he should have had that answer back in November. And those are mm -hmm. the kinds of things that just make it, you know, incrementally sort of hidden from the board if you're not asking questions about like, like today, today is February. You're not asking me how much exactly to the penny is in the unassigned fund balance. Right. That is a huge number for the town to worry about. And if the board isn't asking me a question, I know it's a question and I'm trying to get the answer, but we can't quite get our audit done for a number of reasons. Part of it is due to staffing. So, you know, when we look back at payroll from 2020, and we find double payrolls are booked, we've got problems. And some of those things don't come to light unless you have good people really digging into it so that you guys can have confidence when you go to your taxpayers. And I, 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 think, what, I think what Deborah, let's see, as, as we decided we wanted to upgrade because I, it was very clear to me that there um, it, it's not as though anything bad, it's not as though anything illegal was being done. It was just that it obviously wasn't being done at a particularly high level. And what Deborah brought to us, and then as Chastity has gotten comfortable because she has that experience, it was like, <laughs> no joke, you're not kidding, a bunch of these things aren't being done properly. Okay, and, and again, it's not... Uh, we aren't missing any money and it isn't anything like that, but it's like, holy smokes. It's like, you know, you, you, you may think you're taking good care of your roads and then somebody that comes in and knows what the hell they're actually doing and says, what the hell are you doing? And I think that's sort of where we've ended up with finance right now. So it's the perfect time to say, okay, so what do we need to change? How do you upgrade? How, how do we make this work? Um, and I think one of the big fights we're going to have is going to be with the town clerk about the one day a week that we're paying uh, for and, and to say, here's, here's what we expect to have done in that service. Because what happens is, oh, well, they're, they're busy. So stuff that we feel we're, we're, we have a person that we have a day that we should be able to get a day's work out of. 
um, to do a lot of those sorts of things. Uh, it's like, oh, well, well, Kim needs her and this is it. And there's the town, the town clerk has too much to do and we can't do it. Well, we're, we're, we're going to end up having a serious conversation about that. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So Dave, just to make you feel okay, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying because there's a there's definitely a discovery period that we're going through. And I and I think the positive side is that working with Chastity and Deborah and me and Brian looking over the shoulder to make sure things make sense, for example, um, is that we will figure this out and we will not have a huge increase in the in the budget. We just need to get the yeah. right people doing the right things and move forward. So it's not like all is lost, but I, we do need to spend some time uh, fine tuning it and getting and getting this um, structural restructuring that Chastity mentioned done and in writing and with backup plans to that plan. So we've talked about plan A, you know, team A is who is involved with payroll? Who are the main people and who are their backups? And we'll do that for accounts payable and we'll do that even for the audit process because that that needs to be tuned up we used to get audits back in you know october november and and the last couple of years we haven't got them at all and that's that's a, that starts to hurt my uh grant process because people want to know that we're doing those things and we ought to be audited that's for sure right exactly and we should and we should be well ahead of an audit there's some there's some places that Basically, the outside auditor comes in and everything's in order and good. And, and yeah, Kim had done a, Kim had done that for years, getting ready for the audit, and she had a very good system. Yep. And that process, she still does some of that, uh, but we haven't quite figured out the relationship between, say, my office and the finance people and her. Um, so I know she, that's one of her priorities is to really work well with the audit. So that's one of those overlaps <laughs> where we have we have to engage the treasurer and the town clerk staff to make things work better. And I think I think it will get back to a good place. We just have to talk about it and, and put it out there and get it done. All right. I just just outside it's looking in, it just it just yeah. looked like it things gonna run smoother than it was. It is. Well now, now you know more. <laughs> so that's what we're yeah, doing. It's, I it's a little discovery. It's a little bit of a discovery, and and I'm, nobody's going to be hurt by this. It's really just time and energy to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Already, well, thanks for the explanation. Okay, no, thanks for the question about what's what's going on, basically. So that's good. And and Dave, thank you, thank you for serving. Yes, and everybody, I'm, thank I, you. It's been I, fun, and I'm uh, going to I'm going to miss you. Yeah, you know, well, you. Come you, uh, to watch. you, you you, you, you'll probably see me on the taxpayer side. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward. You know, to you know our number, Dave. You can call in anytime. <laughs> okay. So, All righty, guys. Well, thanks for everything. It has been fun. So okay. we'll see you along the road here. Okay. You have a safe trip. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Dave. Thank you, Nate. Yep. Thanks. So COVID, back to that for a second, um, we're, we'll do hybrids from now on out. Is that what you said earlier? So any, anybody that wants to come think, can come. Sure, and, sure. Right. I think it, leave, leaving it open is that's, you know, the folks that want to come, you know, that, that makes it easier. And I think it, it's, uh, well, I think sometimes, you know, folks just want to drop in for something, but it can be a little uncomfortable walking into a room and then walking out again, where it's not so hard jumping on the, jumping on the Zoom and jumping off again. I think the 100% the remote is only available to towns through April 30th. Uh, after that, we have to have the hybrid with somebody in the meeting room. So I just want yeah. to let that that's going to change at some point. Well, but we said that we're, go we're going to do the March 7th meeting. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about state. Meeting. I'm just state. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it ends April 30th. So there'll always be hybrid after April 30th. You won't, you won't yeah. have the option to 100% remote. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll go. We'll go back to meeting in person on the seventh and take it from there. What are you doing on the? Are you not meeting on the twenty first then? Just that one monthly on the seventh. Um, unless we decide on the seventh that we need to do something else. Okay. Okay. We have anything else? Oops. 
Everybody good? Yep. I think we're out. Motion to adjourn. Okay, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. There, there's the second. Aye. Okay. All, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. We'll 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 hear everybody next Monday.